Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and bienvenido to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion with Ana Jimenez Matmele. Today's program is about human trafficking. Buenos noches. So we have today with us Miss Jade Baker. She's Miss Hawaii High School Pearl City and an advocate for human trafficking. Welcome to Hispanic Hawaii. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here. So let's start the program by telling me a little bit about yourself and also I want to know about your competition that's coming up soon. So I'm in the Miss Hawaii High School America system under the director of Christina Lum. I attend Rafford High School along with my twin brother. Together we serve in NJYRTC as Master Chief Petty Officers. Um, my upcoming pageant is coming up in November 4th at the Hawaii Convention Center. So, Ms. Jade Baker, what inspired you to get involved with this uh, public health issue of human trafficking? After attending Ho'olanapua's Pearl Gala in 2016, me and my mother had went into the art exhibit of the gala and it showcased the life of a young girl that had been sex trafficked in the room where she would put on her clothes and everything and that just really moved me to want to do something about this. Perfect. Uh, can you explain to me what human trafficking is? Human trafficking is more of an umbrella term that goes over sex trafficking and labor trafficking and labor trafficking is when a person is bought or sold for labor purposes and domestic domestic purposes, basically. And sex trafficking is used for just sexual exploitation. You have really um, informed us well so far on what's going on with this. So this issue affects marginalized populations. So the correlation between human trafficking and sex trafficking, what's that all about? As I've said before, labor trafficking is more of when it's self-explanatory, it's in the name, so it's when a person is bought for labor purposes, then sex trafficking is for sexual purposes. Perfect. Hey, can we see a slide number three, please? All right, let's talk about this slide right here. Can you uh, help us us to understand and kind of break it down uh, about, you know, how human trafficking work? So with human trafficking, you have action means purpose. So you have the recruiters, they will transport the victims and they will provide for the victims to lure, their in, lure them in and basically trap them into submission. And they do this through force, fraud or coercion and it's for sexual acts or labor services. So who are the ones trafficking and who is actually being trafficked? So traffickers can be anyone, which makes the problem that much harder to deal with. And sex trafficking doesn't discriminate, so it could be me, someone I may know at school, my brother, my mom, it could be anyone. That is a good point because it turns out that it's not just our youth, it's adults as well. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other populations, um, Amerasians is what I've heard? like India, um, people from India, China. What have you known about that um, in your um, work? Have you been told about that? We have been brought awareness towards that. However, with Ho'olanapua, we work towards the renewal of youth being exploited to the islands of Hawaii. Can we show the next slide, please? So let's talk about, about the, the victims right here. Uh, you can see that it's 46% uh, uh, end up being in the prostitution and 27 mm -hmm. domestic, and some of them are misleading different factors. So when we have somebody into the human trafficking, so they just not end up being labor, but they also end up being into sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. So the, the difference that you mentioned before between one and, and, and the other, how do one person identify that which one of those that person is getting into it? For, with human trafficking, 
the person has to prove force, fraud, or coercion in order for it to be a part of the legal system. Okay. So for labor, they just have to state what they were being bought to do. So they could say, oh, I was being bought to do labor work, or I was bought to have sex with another person. And that's how they would essentially prove it. Great. So um, also, globally, it has become between 21 to $70 billion industry. Mm -hmm. Who's profiting from this? Essentially, the people that are running the sex trafficking rings. And the industry of sex trafficking and human trafficking is so huge. It's, as you've said before, a over $200 billion industry. And it's next to guns and drugs. With a gun, you can only buy a gun once and use it. Same thing for drugs. But with a person, you can buy them multiple times, which makes it that much of an industry that is profitable. So it's all go down to supply and demand, mm -hmm. right? So in order for us to stop it, then we got to stop the demand. Exactly. OK, let's go to the next slide. So we were just talking about the labor and the traffic. Uh, the, the labor and sex traffic, they have some differences. Can you just go over and explain it to me just a little bit? So with labor tra trafficking, you have the victims being bought for domestic situations, such as being bought to be a maid or something like that. And for sex trafficking, you have them being bought for sex purposes, and they're in massage parlors, or even just bars. Yeah, it's interesting you brought up a very important concept about uh, triple or multi-use, mm -hmm. and that is why the numbers have tripled from 21 to 70 billion, the industry, is because they can keep using this vessel, which is the human. Um, so tell me, um, as far as the community, now the people that are working in the industry are being affected. So the Hawaii State Commission on the Status of Women recently published a publication on human trafficking, and from that came threats to the executive director. So they had to close services early for that day, so to speak. Tell us more about what is happening with the community members, because here's people helping in the industry. Now they're being affected. So tell us more about what's going on in the community. So for the community, what they're doing for bringing more awareness towards human trafficking. I work for Ho'olanapua as their first ever state teen educational advocate. So my job is to just go into the schools and provide more awareness so the kids know the signs and they can prevent sex trafficking from happening towards them. And we do a lot of collaboration work like right now Ho'olanapua thanks you for just allowing me to be on the show because right now I'm able to Talk to your viewers and spread that much more awareness. Great. So um, when it comes to human trafficking and our victims, uh, why don't they escape from this? I mean, you would think with all the information out there mm -hmm. now, the acts that, uh, like the 2000 Act that came about to help with this measure, uh, there's more resources, the internet, social media. Why aren't they escaping from this? Unfortunately, it's not that simple for a victim to just escape. Oftentimes, the recruiter has built a trauma that's inside of them and has instilled fear, which allows them to be in submission towards the person. And with all of that trauma and fear, it's just hard for a person to just escape out of a situation like that. From my understanding, I think it is more afraid or the person who's doing the trafficking on the law enforcement mm -hmm. because they, they feel for their family in case they escape, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to go into the next slide so we can talk about that real quick. So can you uh, talk about a uh, little bit in detail about who is being trafficked? So one disclaimer that oftentimes people automatically assume about human trafficking is that it's only the ladies being trafficked. And that's untrue. As you can see in the labor exploitation, you have 60% of the males being trafficked and 40% of the women. 
and that's like a little over just half and it's kind of even. And with sexual exploitation, 98% of the women are being used for sexual purposes and only 2% of the men are. Well, that's a great point because we don't realize that the male, uh, they're being human trafficked to do some kind of work. Mm -hmm. And we always, always thinking about it is the female that is being trafficked. That's a great point. So where can we find some of these uh, uh, people that are being trafficked? They're everywhere, as long as you look out for the signs. Um, I actually have my auntie, who is a part of the organization, she had been sex trafficked, and she had shared with me her story. And just looking at her, you would have never guessed that she had gone through what she'd gone through. Wow, yeah, you don't, you don't know, the, you know who's being a victim. So um, what are the signs that someone is being trafficked or may be trafficked? Because there was an incident on the airlines recently, I think it was Hawaiian Air. Uh, Hawaiian Airlines, that's and, true. And um, they suspected, and yeah, they did an investigation, um, mm -hmm. I don't know how intensive, but they figured it out. I mean, so there's red flags, and that's a good thing, mm -hmm. because that's the first thing, is get them out of their immediate situation and fly them, you know, across the country would be the worst, you know, or out of the state. Um, or out of the country, but um, definitely get them onto the immediate situation. But so, yeah, tell us more about that. Like, what are the signs? So, for instance, if you are a youth, you might see your friend coming in constantly late at school or showing more provocative clothing, or they recently just got more money and they have an older boyfriend. A lot of the techniques that the traffickers will use is called the Romeo technique. Mm -hmm. And they will present themselves as a love interest for the person, gain their trust, allow them to get more money from them because money is always a motivator. Yeah, money is yeah. key, yeah. And they will just use their feelings against them. So just look out for those key signs. Wow, yeah, I think some other signs are, you know, absenteeism. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, hanging out, more, maybe more drug use, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. So good. Uh, could you repeat that, what you said again? Uh, the Romeo effect. So. so the Romeo technique is, again, where the trafficker will prove themselves as a potential love interest. Oftentimes it's with girls. And they will constantly gain their trust, give more gifts and money so they can be trusted and just get the submission of the person that's being trafficked. Thank you. I really wanted you to emphasize that and repeat it so that we, you know, can have the youth be aware yeah. that, you know, it's not because youth are, you know, just discovering themselves and so they're vulnerable and maybe they haven't had a first love. I mean, and this is the mm -hmm. time and so it's a false pretense. So, thank you for reiterating that. No problem. So um, I want to talk about resources. So the Department of Human Resource and Development has a human trafficking state collaborative, and they help with education and projects. And the resources that they provide are materials on human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about maybe where you're at or what you know about you know materials or resources. So with Ho'oponopua, we have our educational and advocacy program. And it's, again, where we go into the schools and we talk to the children about what to look for so they can prevent it for themselves. And we have a lot of pamphlets that we will hand out to them. So we have, like, emergency cards where we can put our a trusted adult's name or the police so they know who to call if they find themselves in trouble. Wow, thank you so much for your information. But we got to take a quick break. And we're going to return and continue talking star about human trafficking after this important message. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. 
Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. <music> Hi, welcome back to Hispanic Hawaii. We are here talking about human traffic. Jay, I want to say thank you so much for giving us so much information. But we have a video that you provided to us and we're going to play. And after the video, let's continue to talk about human traffic. Okay. We're working with what we have and I was like, what do we have? And she's like, your body. I didn't know about sex trafficking until I was in the middle of it. After a while, you just kind of get used to it. Like, everything that goes around just doesn't seem out, out of ordinary to you. We really believed that she was getting ready to be sold. Brianna comes from a small town, was an A student, did everything you hoped your daughter would do. My dreams were to become a nurse. While I was in high school, I had found a waitressing job. I love school, I love being around my friends, and my science class was like my big thing. These traffickers or pimps, they pretend to be an older boyfriend. And these young girls actually fall in love with these guys and believe that this guy loves them back. He was like 24. He played football at a university. He had bought me some designer jeans and things. Go to like movies and malls, trips, stuff like that. He bought me a dress and some jewelry because like I didn't really have stuff like that. It's important for the pimp or the trafficker to separate these girls from their family and their friends. He really gave me the courage to kind of stand up to my mom. He was like, you know, just kind of keep it on the down low. One day he asks for something, and even though she doesn't want to do it, she's so worried about losing him that she will. And once he's had her do it once, he pretty much can control her from then on. He kept saying that he needed money. I was like, you know, I'll help you or whatever. I made a choice that night, but I found out that they actually had chosen me. What a great video, thank you so much. Uh, I want you to tell me a little bit about this video. What is the purpose of this video and how do you use the video to promote uh, human trafficking? So again, I work with an organization called Ho'olanapua and where we use the video is we go into the schools and we show them videos like this to promote the signs of sex trafficking and how it can happen to anyone. And just the Romeo technique is displayed I perfectly in the video. And the video is from Shared Hope International, which is another organization that Hoolanapua works with. And so, so what is the reaction between the student watching this video? Do they have any, any question for you after watch mm -hmm. a video? Or they just stay there, like just finish watching the video and shot like, oh, it's not gonna happen to me? So I remember one instance, I had just got done speaking at the Leadership Global Institute down at the Punahou School. And I had showed this video and a lot of the students didn't believe it was going on. And they were like, oh, because all the students were from around the world, so like Tokyo. They were like, it's not going on where I live, but how can we help you? And it's sad to know that a lot of the kids don't know that this is an issue that directly affects them and it happens everywhere because sex trafficking doesn't discriminate. So a lot of the times their reactions are either shocked or just they didn't know. So the, the main reason they don't know because lack of education from the community to the students, is that the main reason? 
-hmm. and that's where your organization come into place to educate the community. Mm -hmm. So what the state of Hawaii are doing to help the people in Hawaii understand that we have this kind of problem? Many organizations like Ho'oanapu are doing a fabulous effort in trying to promote this issue because, in my opinion, awareness is the first step to solving the problem. If more people know the signs and if more people understand that this is an issue that directly affects them, then it becomes that much real to a person my age who's kind of oblivious and worried about Twitter drama or something. So do you think the this program could be part of the school curricular or task so they can get a better understanding of what is happening? It is... It doesn't your personal opinion. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit hard to implement it into the curriculum because we already have a set base curriculum in school, thanks to the DOD. Yes, that's correct. But with organizations like Ho'olanapua just going into the schools I know that they went into my school, which is Radford. They had gone into a class for career day, and they had spoken to the students about what sex trafficking is, just trying to implement themselves into the school system is already a great effort. Great. We have a corporate slide that I wanted to talk about. Can mm -hmm. you please show them this slide? Can you talk about this slide right here? Who profit from this business? So for sexual exploitation, you heard me talk about the sex trafficking rings, the Romeo technique, this is all part of that. And 66% get the profits from human trafficking. And it's a $99 billion industry. And for domestic servitude, you can see it's a little bit less. It's only 5.3% and they get eight billion dollars from this industry. And as you can see, the green is forced labor, so they get 43.2 billion dollars from this industry. Wow, it's, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Can we go into the next slide, please? And we was talking about the different signs right here that we need to be aware and to understand what is happening. But let's talk about here in Hawaii. I, I want to know, if you know some statistics, what is really happening every day in Hawaii? So the thing about Hawaii is that we have a really huge population of teen runaways. And of those teen runaways, 33% of them get approached within the first 48 hours of them being on the streets for sexual coercion. And this presents a daunting issue because a lot of the teens don't know when they are in school, so. That, that's Hawaii because it's a place that has so many attractions like tourists. Uh, you have the militaries here. Mm -hmm. it, it, that is one of the main reasons that it become a place that people want to do human trafficking? I have been taught that anywhere where there's a lot of male populated areas, is a huge like sign for sex trafficking. So big football games, Hawaii is a great location to host the Super Bowl and stuff like that, and concerts even. At the beach, you can find it. It's happening everywhere, and if people just know the signs, then we can stop the issue. Yes, it, you are very informed that it's a daunting issue and that it's where there's big events and the male population. Mm -hmm. um, it's good that you're the advocate for this, for sure. So what are, so you mentioned the locations. Um, the teens that are vulnerable, who are they mainly? The homeless. Uh, one thing about being a teen, and I can speak for myself since I'm only 16. Well, I was 16 <laughs> too. Yeah, I, I can tell you. Okay. <laughs> but um, we search for acceptance, and that's something that the traffickers can use against us. Mm -hmm. So we will do anything to just fit in with the crowd and just to have an easier life at school. For There's no specific kind of teen. It affects everyone. No one is discriminated for sex trafficking. Well, I want to know a little bit about the organization that you work with. 
Tell me more about your organization. So Ho'oanapua was founded by Jessica Moniz, and they're focused on the renewal of youth being exploited to our islands. And right now they're working on an awesome project called Pearl Haven, and it's mm. out in North Shore, and it's going to be a therapeutic resident for the girls that have been sex trafficked, so they can get the help that they need from the trauma that they've been through, and just having that comfort when they assimilate themselves back into society. Wow, that's a great program. I'm glad you mentioned that. I think I know where they're at because I live in the North Shore. <laughs> so that organization, I think, is doing multi-purpose, which we mm -hmm. have to do that with the nonprofits. The monies are tight, so it's good to do more than one thing. So it's called Pearl Haven. Mm -hmm. Right on. I'm glad that you mentioned that. So there are places uh, that they can go. Now, I want to reiterate again, you said runaways. Mm -hmm. So what is going on with the runaways as far as, um, I know there were street advocates when I was involved in a nonprofit. Are there still street advocates for them? I believe so. Honestly, I am not familiar with that. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no but problem. Um, I believe that there's advocates for the runaways. So my focus is on teens and youth mm -hmm. as I work with Ho'omanapua. So if, if we want people to know uh, how to get help, uh, who do they call, or who they get in contact with? Uh, can you tell me more about that? So they can call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and I believe that will be posted on the broadcasting and the National Hotline for Human Trafficking. Well, any final thoughts? We're almost running out of time, and I would like to know what is your uh, final thoughts. Um, I just want to say thank you for having me. It was a pleasure being able to talk more about sex trafficking. Um, I don't think I have anything else to add. Well, yeah, we want to say, um, be you ready? Because you come into a competition in November, is your competition? Yes. Yeah. So it's the Miss Hawaii High School America system, and I will be vying for the title against nine other beautiful contestants. And I just can't wait for that. So far, I've made so many great friends. The pageant is great for community service and just heightening the community's awareness towards the contestants' platform, as mine is anti-sex trafficking. Well, I want to say good luck in your competition. Thank you. And hopefully you can come back later on after <laughs> the competition and continue visiting Hispania Hawaii. I will. All right. All right, we want to say thank you so much for watching Hispanic Hawaii. And don't forget, you can rewatch this program at thinktechhawaii.com and many other programs just like mine. Thank you, gracias, and aloha.